And now if we play this, you can see our ball bounces to the right, right off of our floor. So this is what we have so far from our previous videos, creating a ball that's bouncing. And as always, you can look over here at my screencast keys to see my mouse clicks and keystrokes. I'm also going to come up here and change this to the select box, just so that we get rid of those move arrows for now. And if I press the space bar to play, we can see what we have. So you can see the ball bouncing and you can see the graph that's associated with it and the curve. And you can see the curves get smaller and smaller until they stop and the ball bounces from a high position and then gets lower and lower each time it bounces until it stops and rests on the floor. But right now this is a bit boring and not quite what we would expect for a ball bouncing, especially if it's like a rubber ball or beach ball or something. So in this video, we're going to animate a few more parameters to make it look more like what we would expect. So let's go back to frame one. And then when the ball comes down to the first bounce, what we would probably expect is it to squish a little bit. But right now you can see it's not squishing at all, which makes it look a little bit weird. So in order to make it squish, we need to adjust and keyframe its scale. So right now we have keyframes on the Z location of the ball, but we also want to add in keyframes to the Z scale of the ball. So if I click and drag in here, you can see the ball stretching and squishing. So we want it to look something like this when it hits the floor, but we don't want it to be squished at frame one. So let's set this Z scale back to one. Now a quick note before we add any keyframes, if you do not see one, one, one on the X, Y, Z scale of the ball, make sure you come to your ball, select it, press control A, and then select scale to apply that scale. After you do that, the X, Y, and Z scale should be one, one, and one. Okay, and so if we come over here, let's open up this object transform curve on the left bar over here, and you can see we have one parameter and that's the Z location. And that is the curve we've already animated and modified. So if I come down here and I also want to animate the Z scale, make sure I'm on frame one, and then we can just click this button to add a keyframe here. And now if you look at our sidebar on the left, again, we have added a new parameter called Z scale. And if I select Z location or select Z scale, you can see the different curves that are highlighted. So let's select Z location and then shift select Z scale so that both of them are highlighted, but the Z scale is the last one we selected, so it's a little bit thicker, meaning it's the active selection. Okay, so now if we come over to this keyframe, this is where the ball touches the floor and this is where we want it to be squished. So let's change this back to, what do we have? Let's do, let's just say point five. That'll be good for now. Let's click the button again to add our keyframe. And now you can see our Z scale has its own curve. If we zoom in here, you can see it starts out at full scale and then slowly squishes to 0.5 when it touches the floor. But you can see it's starting to squish too early. So we don't want it to squish till right before it touches the floor. Now we could come in here and adjust these handles just like we did last time with our curve. And by the way, if you don't see the handles for the keyframes that are not selected, you can change that by coming up here to view and then unchecking only selected keyframe handles. So if you have that checked, you can see, you can only see the handles if you have them selected. So I'm gonna just uncheck that again so we can see all of them and it's a little bit easier that way. So I can just move these here and try to adjust them like this to see where it comes down. It stays full scale until it just about hits the floor and then squishes, but I can't quite get it exact enough. So we're gonna do this a different way. I'm gonna select both of these. So select one and then shift select the other, press V on our keyboard and choose auto clamped to bring it back to the original curve that it was. And for this, it's gonna be a little easier if we don't have the handles showing because that'll be a little bit too cluttered. So I'm gonna come back up to view and then uncheck show handles, which is also the shortcut key, control H. So I'm gonna do just like we've done before. I'm gonna select the first keyframe, shift D 
to duplicate that and then I can just start dragging my mouse and drag that all around wherever I want. But I don't actually want to move the keyframe up and down in any way. So let's constrain it to left and right only by pressing X. And that will constrain it to the X axis, which is left and right. And that way, even if I move my mouse up and down, the keyframe will only go left and right. So let's drag it all the way to the frame right before the ball touches the ground, which is here, and left click to set that there. And now you can see the ball stays full scale until the very moment the ball touches the ground and then it squishes. And then afterwards we keep going, it goes back up and it stays squished. So we're gonna have to do the same thing. Duplicate this keyframe, hit X to make sure we constrain it left and right only and put it on the keyframe right after the ball touches the ground. So there's only one keyframe in which the ball is squished and that's the one where it's touching the ground. And then this is what it looks like. And that's actually starting to look so much better already. But what we need to do is duplicate these for the other bounces. So let's select all of these by shift selecting, then let's duplicate them, press X again to constrain them left and right, and then move them over to the next time the ball touches the floor. And do it again for this one. But we're not going to do it for the very last keyframe because that's when the ball is resting on the floor and should not be smushed. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. That's not looking too bad. This is already looking a little bit more like we would expect. But we have a couple problems. The first one being that the ball isn't actually touching the ground. You can see when we've squished the ball, when we adjusted that scale, it squished it towards its center, bringing the bottom of it up making it not touch the floor anymore. So we have to move the graph of our Z location down just a little bit more so that it actually touches the floor. And we can do that by shift selecting these three here. And I'm not gonna touch the last one again because that one is just fine with the ball resting on the floor. And then we can press G to grab. And if I move my mouse, you can see I'm grabbing all three of them at the same time. And this time I want to constrain them only to go up and down. And I can do that by pressing Y and now, even if I move my mouse left or right, the keyframes will only move up and down. So now I want to actually snap it to the bottom keyframes of the Z scale. So to do that, I can press and hold control while I move my mouse. And now you can see it's snapping, but not to the point where we want it to. And that's just because we need to zoom in a little bit here because we are snapping to an increment, which is the grid lines on our two dimensional graph. So if I come up here, to this drop down, you can see snap to increment, which is just fine, but we just have to zoom in a little bit so that we can see more of those grid lines. So I'm gonna do the same thing, press G to grab, Y, and then I press and hold control and snap that right down to that increment. And now you can see the keyframes of the Z location are touching the bottom keyframes of the Z scale, which makes the ball touch the ground in its squished state. And we can see that in our preview now. And that looks a lot better already. But let's tweak this just a little bit more. You can see that we have a full squish for each of our bounces. However, the ball doesn't go high enough to justify a full squish each time it bounces. So it starts off the highest here, and that's the first bounce and a full squish. And that looks just fine. But then the ball only goes just over half as high and then comes back down. And that full squish, I think, still looks all right for there. But on the next bounce, the ball only goes half as high as that one. And then the next time it hits the floor, it just doesn't justify this amount of squish. But we can change that really easily by zooming in on this last bounce here. If we press Shift B and then click and drag our mouse, we can zoom in to that spot. Let's hold control and middle mouse to adjust it also a little bit more. And now if I just click and drag over these two points here that are overlaying on top of each other, and I press G to grab and then Y to move them up a little bit, you can see in the preview we're adjusting both the location and the scale on the Z axis. And remember, because they are overlapping now, the location is adjusting to the scale of the squish, and so it always looks like it's touching the floor. So let's adjust this here to just, I'm just eyeballing it here. So maybe around 
yeah, about halfway here like this. And that squish looks more like it matches the height of that bounce than a full squish there. So now let's take a look at what we have. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks so much better. And it's just what our eye would expect if we saw a ball bouncing in the real world. All right, awesome. So that is how you animate multiple curves at the same time for different parameters. So now let's make this even more interesting. Let's add another parameter to make the ball move. I'm gonna come up back over to our toolbar. By the way, if you don't see this bar, it's T on the keyboard. And then select move again so that we can see our arrows. And let's go into the front view by coming over here to this widget and clicking the negative Y. You can also press one on the numpad if you have a numpad. Let's also enable our overlay so that we can see the graph. And this is what it looks like from the front. So we want to make this ball move over to the right as it bounces. And that is going to be the location on the X axis. So at frame one, I want it to be right where it is, which is zero. So let's add a keyframe on that. And you can see we've added another parameter, which is our X location which is this red curve down here. Now it looks a little purple right now because it's on the zero zero axis. So let's keep going and let's go to the very end where the ball has stopped bouncing, which is frame 43. Okay, so now let's move the ball to wherever we want. We can click and drag the red arrow to move it. We can also come over here to the slider and click and drag in here to place it. Uh, I'm just gonna click in there and type 14. That's good enough for now. And then add another keyframe. And now if we come over to the sidebar and select our X location, you can see the red curve that represents our X location going up here. And now if we play this, you can see our ball bounces to the right, right off of our floor. And in fact, you know, we don't need the floor right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hide it. But you can see what's happening now. We have all three of these curves on our graph animated together, the Z location, movement up and down, the Z scale to squish the ball, and the X location to move the ball to the right. And since they're all happening at the same time, it looks like there's a ball that's actually bouncing in 3D space. So let's talk about how the two-dimensional graph and curve relate to 3D space and the 3D grid. So this time let's go into top mode by clicking the Z here or pressing seven on the numpad. And let's go back to frame one. And you can see the ball is in the center where the X and the Y axes cross. And that is going to be the zero location for both of those. So if we look over here, you can see location of the X and the Y, both of them are at zero. And then if I click and drag to the right in the X location, you can see I'm increasing this in the positive. And in the 3D viewport, you can see the ball going to the right. I'm just gonna type five in here. You can see this has now gone one, two, three, four, five grid lines in the 3D view to the right. If I click in here and make this negative, then it goes five grid lines to the left. So positive on the X is right and negative on the X is left. So let's do the same thing for the Y. If I click and type five, positive five on the Y goes up or actually in 3D space to the back. And then if I zoom out here and then type negative five, it goes forwards to the front or in top mode down. So negative is down, positive is up in the Y and then the X positive is right, negative is left. So let's bring that back to zero here again and let's see how that relates to our animation graph here. You can see that this graph is time, which is our frames. So we start at frame one, and then over time we eventually get to frame 43, which is here at this keyframe. So the frames are left and right. And then if we take this keyframe and move it up and down, it gives it a value, whether it's positive or negative, and that correlates to the positive and negative in the 3D view. So if I move it up, it goes right, and if I move it down, it goes left. So if I place it here, and if we scroll in and take a look, we have on the location of the X, we have 11.5 as the value. And if I open up my properties here by pressing the N key, and make sure you're on the F curve tab, and that active keyframe is open, and make sure you have an active keyframe. Here, let me show you. If I click out here, you won't see anything over here. And even if you select all of them by pressing A, 
all of them are selected but none of them are active so you still don't see anything so let's click this one which turns that keyframe white and makes it the active keyframe so I'm gonna zoom back in here and now you can see it's just under 12 on the value which over here you can see the value is 11.6 which is rounded if you click in it's actually 11.567 so I'm just gonna click in here and type 12 and now you can see it's moved to the 12 grid line here in the animation graph and the keyframe here is 43 and if I click and drag here I can move the keyframe around so you have your keyframe and your value right there which is your left and right and then up and down and the animation graph which then corresponds to the movement of the ball in 3D space and just like before if I click in here and type negative 12 it'll move the ball to the left negative from the zero point okay but for now I'm gonna bring that back to 14 so let's clean up our graph a little bit here so let's just press home to center everything and then press control H to show all the handles again so it's a bit busy here so let's go ahead and hide the Z location and scale for now that way we only have the X curve to look at and nothing else is cluttering our view and then what we can do is press play and start adjusting these curves and we can see our result in real time and you can give the ball movement different personalities you can make it go forward at the start really fast and then slow down at the end or you can do the opposite where you start off slow and then it picks up speed and you can do a whole bunch of different things and make it have different motions and personalities just by clicking and dragging around a couple of these handles All right, so just like before, the time has come that it is your turn. I have three challenges for you this time. Easy, intermediate, and advanced. So the easy one is to make this ball bounce in the opposite direction. So right now it's going to the right. All you need to do is make it bounce to the left. So that's the easy challenge, okay? So the intermediate challenge, if you dare, um, make it bounce back and forth uh, on the y-axis instead of the x-axis. And when I mean bounce back and forth, I mean first do positive and then do a negative. Okay, and a hint for this is you'll need to get rid of your x location keyframes and add another location keyframes to your animation graph. And hint, hint, it's not the z location or the x location. And then the advanced challenge, if you so dare to take it, is make the ball bounce diagonally. And you have four options to choose. So what I mean is, instead of going left or right, or back and forth, make the ball go like this, diagonally. So a hint for this one is that you'll need two location axes to work with there, hint, hint. Those are your challenges if you so choose to accept them. So when you are ready, go ahead to the next video.